Hi, I'm Steve Selleck, the founder of FitTest, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to use FitTest to conduct high-quality cyclergometer aerobic fitness testing. So before I do that, I just want to outline some of the problems uh, that you could encounter with some of the published cyclergometer tests. And I'd like to start first with the YMCA cyclergometer test. Um, so I certainly give it a tick for using multi-stage testing, but it's limited in that it only uses four stages, including very much a preliminary first stage. But that's not my main concern. My, ma my major concern here is that on the, the, the um, participants um, all um, uh, cycle at the first stage at 150 kilogram meters per minute, that's the power at, um, uh, for that first stage. And the second stage, the intensity, or sorry, the power, uh, 750, 600, 450, 300, that is determined according to the heart rates measured at the end of the first stage. Now, for example, if, so everyone starts at 150 kilogram meters per minute, if the heart rate was very low at the end of the first stage, then the person would proceed to the highest uh, workload or power for the second stage. So they'd go from 150 to 750, in other words, five times the workload. But I can give you many examples where heart rate would be uh, low, um, but not because of any uh, high levels of fitness. Now, examples of that, uh, people on beta blockers, people who have other cardiovascular disease, such as problems with their native pacemaker tissues, people with arrhythmias, um, and, uh, and also people who have some kind of um, pre-fainting or vagal response. That's unusual during exercise, it more commonly occurs during recovery. And there's also just general variation in people's um, uh, heart rate responses to exercise that isn't uh, predicted uh, accurately by age predicted heart rate peak. So I don't like the fact that people with very low heart rates in that first stage go to a very high workload on the second stage. I think that is potentially unsafe and I certainly wouldn't use it just for that basis. The second, the second major problem I have is that the um, the test recommends that you don't proceed uh, exceed 85% of age predicted heart rate peak. Now, I, I want to give you two examples of why I find that a, a problem. The first is related to what I just mentioned before, and that is that if someone is on a heart rate modulating uh, medication, usually reducing heart rates, for example, beta blockers, but there are other medications as well, then that will dramatically reduce age predicted, not age predicted, the actual heart rate peak. And so that will be much lower than age predicted heart rate peak. So someone in that category could easily exceed 85% of age predicted heart rate peak, yet be well over 100% of their actual heart rate peak, meaning that the, meaning that the test is now unsafe. The second example is completely different to that, and that would be if you want to prescribe exercise to very high intensities, then for a healthy person, person that I, that I don't find any signs or symptoms contraindicating exercise, then I may well want to exceed 85% of age predicted heart rate peak because I simply want to be able to assess someone at the sort of heart rates that you would get when you want to program them at. There's no point in testing someone to a lower heart rate at which you want to train them at. So that's two big exceptions to the recommendation not to exceed 85% of age predicted heart rate peak. I now want to go on to the Astrand rhyming cyclogometer test. And this is a very different test. It essentially uses a single stage test with a nomogram as shown over here, which I will um, go through in a few minutes, in a couple of minutes. So um, what this is based on, a single stage test is, it's based on the principle that the lower the heart rates during exercise, 
or during recovery from exercise, then um, the then the higher the level of fitness. So um, in, in this example here, this person's heart rate was 142 at the fifth minute and 146 beats per minute at the sixth minute. The average heart rate here was 144 beats per minute. So we've got 144 beats per minute here. Uh, and this is a female, so I'm just plotting here uh, for a female. And uh, this person is 52 kilograms, so you'd plot from the 144 through the 52 um, kilogram, or not through the 52 kilograms, through the 450 kilogram meters per minute, which is 75 watts. So from here, you plot through to here, and you end up with an estimated VO2 peak of 2.6 liters. And you can then uh, convert that to mils per kilogram per minute, which turned out to be 38.8. And, and, and in that, there was also a correction factor for her age of 45 years of age, the correction factor being 0.78. So this nomogram is very clunky. Uh, we don't know how accurate it is. A few other uh, disadvantages, if you're using this same nomogram for step testing, then it's limited up to 90 kilograms, which is really not a big weight these days. Uh, and um, the, the other thing is this total sort of arbitrary discrimination between men and women. So for example, for the step test, uh, women are using 33 centimetre step, men 40 centimetres. Um, and uh, the pulse rates are also quite different uh, for men and women. So I don't like all the arbitrariness of it. I don't like the clunky calculations. As I said in the previous slide, I certainly don't support the issue of not exceeding 85% of age predicted heart rate peak. I've given you two exceptions to that previously. I don't like the fact that this is a single stage test because it doesn't allow you to identify a symptom free range of exercise intensities from which to prescribe exercise. And there's also some problem with lower heart rates indicating greater fitness because there are so many exceptions to that rule. So now I want to show you how uh, fit test is used uh, to um, how I do use um, fit test to pr provide high quality customized cycle ergometer protocols. Now, um, the first thing is I'm a very big believer as you can probably tell in multi-stage testing because this allows us to find a symptom-free range of exercise intensities for individualized uh, exercise programming, which I think is absolutely fundamental to, to good quality prescription of exercise. It really depends on multi-stage testing versus single-stage testing where you can't in any way calculate percentages of peak work rate or percentages of VO2 peak. So multi-stage testing, I'm a big fan of this. I start my tests at ratings of perceived exertion equivalent to very, very light or very light for all individuals. And this is very easy to determine with a little bit of practice. I then progress through a multi-stage exercise test using ratings of perceived exertion until the test has reached an intended final exercise intensity. And the intended final exercise intensity depends on the fitness and health of the client and also the intended exercise intensities for programming. So if you're going to do a high intensity training program, then you need to go to, you know, at or near heart rate uh, peak, whether that be age predicted or some other uh, measure of um, heart rate peak. Now, that brings us into the last point, and that is uh, fit test. One of the very strongest features of fit test is that you have total control over the use and interpretation of all heart rates, um, including whether you're going to use age predicted heart rate peak or some other heart rate peak that you've got good reason to, to support in preference to age predicted heart rate peak. Now, I just want to show you how that works um, on fit test. So this is a client um, with um, a VO2 peak estimated at 28.4 mils per kilogram per minute. You notice the heart rate peak was 155, whereas the age predicted heart rate peak was 167. 
So this represents 92% of, uh, of the age predicted heart rate peak. And you can see here these heart rates progressed from 83 up to 155. The, the customised exercise test was very easy to conduct, starting at 80 watts based on RPE or ratings of perceived exertion being very light. And then I actually haven't put the RPEs in here, but they, they could have been in. Starting at 80 watts and proceeding in 10 watt increments up to 180 watts. So very, very easy test to administer. And then the next slide just shows how that looks. And here we have a symptom-free range of exercise intensities here with reasonably good linearity. And we can then very easily prescribe exercise from that based on any of the methods that are provided within Fit Test. There's a lot of different methods available to you for prescribing uh, from this exercise test directly linked to your client's data. And over here we have the age predicted well, not the age predicted, the, the age categorisation for this individual with a 28 BO2 uh, for a 58 year old male. So that's all I really had to say to you uh, in relation to using Fit Test to provide high quality cycle ergometer te tests, which then link beautifully to the creation of individualised exercise plans, whether you do that using cycling or some other mode of exercise. So thanks for looking at this um, short video and I wish you well. And if you have any questions at all, please get back to me on info at myfittest.com.au. Thanks for now and bye.